Alright, hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorso, the channel is called Ethernet Link, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys two ways to calculate market, um, well the Hearst exponent for the market, I was going to say market entropy, I just recorded that video, but in this video we're going to go over the Hearst exponent, and the equations for calculating it, and why it's useful. So a little bit of background on it, it is a number between um, 0 and 1, when the number is above 0 0.5, it means that the market's in an uptrend. When the market's below 0 0.5, it means that the market's in a downtrend. And when the number is 0 0.5, it means that it's a random walk and totally unpredictable. So we're going to go through two ways to calculate that right now. And I'm going to go top to bottom with the code I already have in here. It's not much. We just have NumPy up here. We need that. And we do have math. I don't think it's necessary, but we have it. Uh, we have our S&P 500 futures here. We have a symbol version of it. We have the look back of 50, which is the size of a rolling window. The rolling window is for quote bars. We're going to come back into our on data method now, and we're going to check if the um, the symbol has any data for us to store, or if the symbol is none. If that passes, we're going to add our quote bars to our rolling window. We're going to check if our rolling window is ready. If it is, we're going to make this list, just a regular Python list of the closing prices in that rolling window. And then we're going to plot them from this function that we haven't written yet. So let's get to writing it. The first way that we're going to do it is I actually have the formula here. Big thanks to ChatGPT, even though it's a little terrifying, but whatever. I can go through. I wanted to rant about AI for a while. I do it on my Snapchat story sometimes, but you know, it's just a bunch of, it's just like a bunch of kids I know. So like, they're like, Joe, shut up. We don't care. Might do it on YouTube because I, I got something. I got some stuff to say about it. But we're gonna get back into the Hearst exponent now, where the Hearst exponent equals two times I don't know what Greek letter that is, n plus one two times that Greek stuff again, where this is the standard deviation of the logarithmic of turns over n plus one consecutive time intervals. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna calculate all that. First thing we need to do is we need we need to make a NumPy array of this closing prices. So we're just going to say prices equals np.array and caps all time. So that closing prices, just like that. Make sure you have those square brackets in there. Next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the logarithmic returns of this. This is actually, yes, this is the log returns. Is this what I need? Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> this is what I need. I got confused with the second with the second way I'm going to do this. So we say log returns equals. We can one line of this, which is when you're a nerd. These are things. These they, these are the things you get excited about. Is one liner log returns in Python. This is what you get happy about. So we're going to say np dot diff. If I can spell it right, diff. And then we're going to say np dot log. Prices. There you go. Nice little one-liner for logarithmic returns. This is what we get excited about, okay? <laughs> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the... I'll actually spell it out. Standard DV. If I can spell it right. Standard depth. Whatever. I'm a programmer, not a, not a writer. So we're going to say standard deviation of our log returns is np.std um, log returns. Nice and simple. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually declare our first exponent variable and we're going to we're going to copy this with our data. It's that simple when you actually know what the formula is. So we can say std log returns plus one and then we're going to put that over Self, uh, uh, not self, we can put that over two times our standard deviation log returns. And then we're going to return it. Okay. Cool. So now when we have this plot function in here, all we need to do is build back test this, and there we go. Curses. What happened? 
and misspelled it. So what happens when you do them in one take? You make stupid little mistakes like that, but it's okay, because we leave them in the video. <laughs> we leave them in there, and it's, I just spelled something wrong. So, there we go. And we have our Hearst exponent. This one, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. This one is not between 0 and 1. And it wouldn't even be, because that was 103 right there. But it, it still does work in a weird way to calculate market direction. It still does work like that. Um, that was something I forgot to mention with this one, is that this one is not between 0 and 1. But I figured I would still leave it in there because it does still have some merit to it. But I forgot about that. I forgot to mention that. But now that we calculated that one, we're going to get right into the other one. We're going to keep this nice and quick because my videos have been a little bit longer than I wanted them to be recently. But this one is actually a little bit easier. So I don't remember if I... Yeah. Oh. There we go. Comment back in there as well. So now this one, first exponent is log Rn over S over log N minus 0 0.5 where Rn is the range of the cumulative sum of n data points, and S is the standard deviation of n data points. So, I actually don't adhere to this formula perfectly, because I don't do the range of it, but it still, it still works. It's still a number between 0 and 5. I mean, um, between 0 and 1, and it does seem like it has the correct attributes to it. So, what are we going to do? We can get rid of this, besides our... Um, MP, besides our numpy array, and next thing we need to do is we need to make our rn. And rn is just going to be the cumulative sum of our traces. And s, just like the formula says, is the standard deviation of that. So mp.std. Prices. Next. First is, and we're going to do that up there. Oh yeah, and then the formula, you, you got to subtract it by 0.5. So, so the log of Rn over S, and then the, why does it look so good to me? Because I don't need to put this in parentheses, but I will. And then mp dot log prices. Because n our our data points are n, and our data points are prices up here. So this returns Hearst, and Hearst, if we run it just like this, we get is this the one that has it? Yes, no it's not. <laughs> we get nope, not that either. I, I always test it. We get arrays like this, right? And we can see as we get further down the array, it gets a little bit more and more and more and more accurate. So we're going to use this last number right here because it seems to be the one with the most weight to it. Obviously, you could play with that all you want. But so if we just return it like this, we get one of those weird things. If we return it like this, we get the same thing. If we return it like this, we actually get that number. So, this is what we're going to use. Now again, that's it. I might have to play with these parentheses. I don't think so. But, let's see what happens. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to have that in the same thing, but let's see what happens. We'll play around with it. We'll do them all. S is not defined. Well, capital S. Happened twice. Alright, there we go. And we see Hearst is our value right here. It's not that great, but yeah, like right here. Because it's so laggy with the rest of it, it's you gotta play with these things with the lengths and these it, this isn't resolution daily. But now I wanna I want to see how different it'll make it. I want to play around with this a little bit and just see what happens and see which one seems to be the most accurate because 
Okay, no, so that's just incorrect. We're not supposed to do it like that. Yeah, that seems to have no correlation to the market at all. So let's leave that out of here. The way I have it in my reference is like this. And in, in the logs, it was always numbered between 0 and 1. Let's just see what this gives us. It looked like the same thing, but actually between 0 and 1. It seems like the first one was the best. The one to write. It seems like this one was the best. Actually, I don't think that's any different. <laughs> Zero point. Or, yeah, they're pretty much identical. They're not very different at all. Now, this isn't daily, so it will just be straight up laggy. And like you see, it's, there wasn't even really a little dip right there. I'm trying to see where there was one. Yeah, whenever there's a little dip, it like emphasizes it way too much, and then just gets deeper in the hole before. It can get back up there, but of course, when you play around with these, like if I'm sure, go. Like, let's just see what it looks like in the hour, with the hourly quote bars instead of um daily ones. Let's just see what happens. I hope that you guys find value in this this little mathematical videos. Oh Jesus! Yeah, this one is saying that it's trending most of the time. Yeah, we see down here, as it pulls back, we have less strength. Yeah, right there, less strength. And actually, wow, that's an even 0.5. Um, yeah, we just see that it actually, yeah, you see right there, like, low, low. You would just have to play in this scenario. And you see right there, a little peak, and then we come back down to normal. What you would have to do in this scenario is just play with a look back to get it to be actually applicable. You would just the way that I would literally do it, I was just make an, I would make a parameter, make a variable for it, and then just optimize it. But if you want to just play around with it, if you don't have a paid account, then you would just play around with this, play around with the resolution. My strategies are all short-term order flow ones, so I put this in minutely and I just optimize it and and we'll grant. We are good. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy these mathematical videos. I hope that you guys find value in this. And if you have any other um, equations and financial variables that aren't built-in indicators, um, feel free to comment them and I'll find a way to code them up. If you don't want me to do it and you want to do it yourself, just ask ChatGPT to do it a million times and eventually You'll get some code that you don't have to don't have to change that much that works. But um Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you find value in it. Hope you give me something else to code up. And I hope I see you in the next one. If you don't if you guys don't mind leaving a like and subscribe, it helps me a great deal I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm trying to get some some money off of YouTube, I'm not gonna lie, that's what I want. And yeah, please leave some comments and just some suggestions for what you'd like to see next. See you guys later. Goodbye.